Hello, for today's uh, video lecture, we're gonna be talking about rigid body surface impact. So when a rigid body impacts a surface, it has the potential to bounce off the surface just like a particle, uh, but there's also the potential for rotation uh, before or after the impact, which is gonna complicate the situation. So an example of this uh, would be a dropping a wrench onto a hard surface. Uh, so even if the wrench is going straight down before the impact, uh, you can kind of predict that after the impact, uh, is going to bounce back up, but it's also going to be spinning uh, after the impact. Um, so although, although this looks fairly chaotic, uh, we can predict post-impact uh, velocities and angular velocities uh, using our conservation of momentum uh, equations as well as the idea of the coefficient of restitution. Um, so we're often going to be given a set of velocities before an impact and need to solve for uh, a couple things. So the velocity of the center of mass uh, after the impact, uh, this is going to be in terms of normal and tangential components as we're going to see here in a second. Uh, so there's two components to the velocity uh, as well as the angular velocity of the body after the impact. Um, so with this we can see that we've got basically three unknowns uh, which means that we're going to need three equations to work with to make this prediction as a whole uh, because of those three unknowns. All right, so going back to our wrench on a surface here, uh, in order to generate the three equations, we need to rely on our normal and tangential directions, just as we did with surface particle collision. So again, the uh, tangential direction is gonna be parallel to the surface, so that runs along the surface itself. Uh, the normal direction, as normal means, is going to be perpendicular to the surface, uh, and this is where the, the impact forces are gonna be acting in our normal direction. Uh, and then we also need to look at two specific points. So we're going to need to identify uh, the center of mass of the body. So figure out where that point is, and we're going to call that G here. Uh, and also the point of impact of the force. And for this, for these slides, we're going to call that point P. Uh, so where the wrench hits the ground is our point P here. So between those coordinate systems and those points, uh, we're going to have three equations we can work with. All right, so first of all, uh, assuming that there's no friction force during the impact, uh, there's going to be no force at all to change the velocity in the tangential direction. Um, so if there is no um, force, there's no impulse. If there's no impulse, there's no change in momentum. And assuming the mass of the wrench stays the same, um, we're going to have the velocity remain the same. And this applies specifically to the center of mass of the body. So the velocity of uh, the center of mass, g, in the tangential direction, final, uh, is just equal to the velocity in the tangential uh, direction of g initial. Uh, so point g is going to maintain the same velocity before and after impact in the tangential direction. All right, so next up is the coefficient of restitution. So this can be applied uh, to the body, uh, and this is, a, this is the normal velocity of the point of impact of the body. Uh, so before, we just kind of had the body had one velocity in the normal direction. Um, here, specifically, it's talking about point P. Uh, so whatever uh, the velocity of uh, point, or the, the coefficient of restitution is going to be equal to the ratio between the velocity of point P final uh, divided, divided by the velocity of point P initial uh, and it's the negative of that because it is going to cause the opposite direction here. Um, so this is going to be whatever the velocity is of this point going in. So say the coefficient of restitution is 0.8. Uh, if it's coming down at one meter per second, it would this point would be moving upwards 0.8 meters per second after the impact. Um, so this is specifically at the point of impact, whereas the previous one uh, this was at the center of mass. So do keep that in mind here. And then finally, uh, as there are no moments at the point of impact, uh, so this force here is going to be huge. Uh, it's going to dwarf all other forces. We would have a gravity force at G. Uh, but during the impact itself, or during this very short time, uh, there's kind of negligible impulse for anything except for the force of the impact. Uh, and if that's true, uh, the Momentum's going to be conserved, angular momentum's going to be conserved about point P. Since the point of impact is generally not the center of mass, as you know, it's, you can see they're different here, uh, and it's also not an instant center, uh, we need to use the angular momentum about any point relationship uh, that we discussed on the angular momentum page. So uh, this is the full relationship. Uh, so this is the angular 
uh, momentum of our wrench about point P um, initial. This is the angular momentum of our wrench about point P final. Uh, so it's IG times omega initial, so mass moment of inertia times the angular velocity of our body, uh, plus it's going to be a cross product, so RG with respect to P, so there's a vector going from this point to this point, you've got to figure out that displacement vector, uh, crossed with the momentum vector uh, of our wrench, so that is the mass of the wrench times the velocity of uh, point G before the impact, so that is going to be equal to uh, more or less the same value, uh, except it is omega final instead of omega initial, uh, and it's going to be VG final instead of VG initial here. So this is the velocity of the center of mass initially, and the velocity of the center of mass final. So between these three equations, we should have everything we need. So we've got our three equations. It should let us solve for up to three unknowns. Um, so this is the Basically, the velocity remains unchanged in the tangential direction. We've got our coefficient of restitution. And then finally, the conservation of angular momentum about the point of impact. Um, so we can see that some of these velocities are at the center of mass g, and some of these velocities are at the point of impact p. So because of that, uh, we're going to have some differences here. Uh, and to kind of fill in the gaps, we usually need to have some kinematic relationships. So I don't have specifics for that in the slides here. Well, you'll need to figure that out, but you'll need to relate the velocity of point P uh, to the velocity of the center of mass and the angular velocity uh, of the piece as well. So with those extra equations, you will almost certainly be able to solve for all of the unknowns after your collision. All right, so bringing this through uh, the entire process, uh, usually you want to start by creating a diagram showing the initial and final states. Uh, identify any known and unknown values you have before or after the impact. Uh, you want to clearly identify the normal and tangential directions. It's going to be important in your analysis as everything is in normal and tangential directions. Uh, you're going to want to clearly identify point P, our point of impact, as well as the center of mass of the body. Uh, so without knowing exactly where those are, you're not going to be able to plug in your R, uh, G with respect to P uh, value that you need. Um, once you have all of those uh, things identified in your diagram, write out your equations as we just, just discussed in the previous slides. Enter the known values. Uh, add any necessary uh, kind of kin kinematics relationships relating the motion at P to the motion at G. Uh, and then finally, solve your equations for the unknown values. So it might be a lot of math or algebra along the way. Uh, so use an equation solver if you deem that necessary. All right, that's all we've got for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again.